Hi guys, how are you? I am reporting live from South City, St. Louis, aka the House of LT. And I want to say thank you for, uh, I guess, working with me during this um, historical week. So I'm sorry that I could not be in class on Monday or that I am planning to take the rest of the week off to um, recover from my election judging and also to kind of take in the, um, I don't know, the chaos that is going to ensue. So um, if you are watching this, you may or may not have already voted or you may or may not have already seen um, the election results. But if you're watching it and it is not yet the end of the day on November 3rd, be sure to go out and vote. Um, otherwise, I am going to take you through this PowerPoint and give you some background information so that you can complete your discussion boards this week on Manifest Destiny. And so let me share my screen with you and make me little down in the bottom. So what we're going to be doing this week um, is really important for understanding the coming of the Civil War. And as a whole, um, this is all still again happening in the antebellum period. So um, this week, we're going to look at geographical change. Last week, we looked at social change with men and women and gender and immigration. This week, we're going to look at geographical expansion and manifest destiny. But remember, it's all happening at the same time as everything we've been talking about. So this week, um, we're going to cover these four events, the Missouri Compromise, Native American removal, which we've already talked about when we did Jackson, Texas, and the Mexican War. And so again, just to, you know, keep saying that these things are happening the same time as cotton, as manufacturing, transportation, growth of cities, and of course the topics we did last week. Um, so what I'm going to do for you today is I'm not going to go through every single slide. Um, you will have all the evidence and the information um, on the PowerPoint on Brightspace. Instead, what I'm going to do is actually just go through some, and hit some of the highlights, um, and I'm going to use that mostly through pictures. Um, before we get to these four events, first kind of the ideology that's driving this, um, I guess you could say, period that we are going to use as a justification for what we're going to do is we call it manifest destiny. And so you may have heard of this before, um, but what it means is just to possess the whole entire continent for freedom and liberty, and that power to do so is granted by God. And so what it says is that we as Americans have the right to displace Native Americans and Mexicans um, and bring African Americans in order to make way for our settlement, our business, our culture, for cotton, for all the things that is happening during this time. And so uh, we've been doing this since 1492, right? This is what Columbus did. This is what we did in Virginia, what we did in with the Wampanoag. Like this is nothing new. Um, however, in order to do these things, we're saying that they're um, justified by God, that they're very Christian and it's a way for American um, exceptionalism to expand. So we're going to do a lot of bad things, um, but Manifest Destiny kind of makes it seem good. So this picture right here on the next slide um, is kind of the hallmark painting of Manifest Destiny. So you can see kind of on the right, it shows this um, commerce and civilization and railroads and the angel is bringing Christianity and civilization to the uncivilized groups, as you can see the dark kind of wilderness and frontier of the native peoples. So this is kind of the propaganda that's gonna be used to say, hey, we're doing really good things. So I'm gonna go through the four events. And the first one we're gonna talk about is Missouri. So if you guys are from Missouri, you probably have the license plate that says the bicentennial because yes, the bicentennial of Missouri's statehood is this year. Um, but why did it become state in 1821? Well, because of the Missouri Compromise. So we are gonna see yellow as slave states, green as free states. And so Missouri is gonna enter the union as a slave state. However, in order to balance the Senate um, with equal numbers of 11 slave states and 11 free states, we're going to bring Maine in as a free state to keep that balance. Not only that, but we're going to draw this red line that's super important to say that slavery cannot go above 
that red line. Missouri is the exception, but everything else in the Louisiana Purchase is has to be free territory. So what that Missouri Compromise line really does is kind of box the Southerners, the slaveholders, out of expansion, right? And so they're very angry by this because they can see that free states are going to multiply while they are kind of like, I, oh shit, they, ah, they are kind of boxed in um, by that. So we'll just continue with what I have here. So how do slaveholders feel? Remember, it's political power and economic power. They want to expand to make cotton money, but they also want slave states for more electoral college votes to get a Democrat in office and to have a Democratic majority in Congress. So they are not happy about this and they're going to expand and they're going to go to Texas and Mexico. But first, they're going to remove the inhabitants of the southeast and that is native removal. And we've done this when we did Jackson. There's a map of the five groups, right? Seminole, Creek, Choctaw, Chickasaw and Cherokee. And as we know, the Native Removal Act, Jackson not listening to the Supreme Court case against um, the state of Georgia and the Cherokee. Supreme Court rules in favor of the Cherokee. Jackson says, I don't care. And with a Democrat in office, we are gonna see that these peoples and also peoples who are in kind of the North, um, the Sacks and the, fo or the Socks and the Foxes will be removed too. But for the most part, we're gonna see the Southeast tribes be forcibly removed to Oklahoma so that Southerners can now have their cotton plantations here since they're boxed out of this area because that's a different country that is spain right um so i gave you details about how the natives um push back and kind of the intricacies of removal um but for now we know that natives were removed because democrats were kind of boxed out of the louisiana purchase now if you see this right here right this is spain however by the time we get to 1821 Mexico is going to get its independence from Spain. So here's what Mexico looks like in 1821. So these are all the different provinces of Mexico, right? So if we look at the U.S., here's Louisiana, here's Indian Territory, here's Missouri, and here's where slavery can't go. So where are slaveholders going to go after they remove Native peoples? They are going to go to Texas or Tejas, right? And you can see that this eventually will become Texas because slaveholders are going to start living, literally bringing people over, bring their slaves, bringing people, right? And, and white settlement is going to happen in Texas, and they're just going to post up. And then in 1836, um, the Texans kind of build this fort at an old Spanish mission. And the president of Mexico says, you can't have a fort in our country. And so they attack the invaders, the Texans, right? And those that is the Alamo, right? And so all the people at the Alamo are killed. And when word gets back that the Mexicans killed people um, in their own country, the American government says, well, we're gonna send troops. This is Martin Van Buren, Jackson's you know, vice president. It's gonna say, we're gonna send troops down there to defeat the Mexican army. And the counterattack by Sam Houston at the Battle of San Jacinto will be successful. And as a result, that dark kind of province, that dark area, um, Texas will fall into U.S. hands, right, and becomes a U.S. territory. Um, so that is very controversial because, again, think if Canadians came down into Illinois and set up a fort, right, how would we act as Americans? How would the government act? We would say, you know, you can't hold arms against us. This is our country. And so Mexico reacts, and then the U.S. is going to counterattack, be successful, and take that territory. So the question with Texas, though, is what does Texas look like? So this right here is Texas, okay? This is disputed territory, and this is Mexico. So James Polk is a Southern Democrat, and when he gets elected in 1844, he is going to annex Texas, which makes it a U.S. territory, and then make it a state in 1845, except he's a Democrat, he's a slaveholder, he's not going to stop there. And so what he's going to do is he's actually going to provoke the Mexicans to fight a war with the U.S. Um, and Abraham Lincoln calls this an unconstitutional war because what he's going to do is literally send 
troops down here into Mexican territory across the Rio Grande and basically set up a like bait, right, for an attack. And so here's what it looks like in color to help you a little bit. So the yellow is Little Texas. That's the U.S. state. The green is disputed territory and the orange is Mexico. So the U.S. says that um, their border is the Rio Grande. Mexico is going to say their border is the Nueces River. So basically what James Polk is going to do is send the U.S. Army down here to the Rio Grande. And then they're going to cross over into Mexico. And actually there um, is U.S. troops who are killed, right? The Mexicans are going to kill them. They're on their territory. They're killed. And Polk says, look, American blood shed on American soil. We have a cry for war. And Polk and his his Democrats are going to fuel a war um, in order to fight Mexico and again, not stop at Little Texas, but move all the way through. And as you can see, the outline of the future U.S. states. So this turns into a three year war known as the Mexican-American War. And you can see kind of Mexico is all of this green. Right. And you can see what now is Mexico and the U.S. border and what we gained from this territory. So the U.S. will win this war. Um, we suffer about 17,000 casualties. The Mexicans have about 25,000 25, casualties. And as a result of this war, um, we will see that big Texas will be a state and then we will gain all this territory, including the Southwest and the state of California. Um, so this venture to take Texas um, and then take Mexican territory is all successful um, for the Southerners. Um, so you can see that the old kind of South right here um, by being boxed out of the Missouri um, or sorry, the Louisiana Purchase, but then removing natives and then expanding all the way to the Pacific Ocean, what slaveholders see is that this is going to be slavery expanding, right? And so thus they're going to have more money and they're also going to have the votes for the Electoral College and the votes for Congress and have their people to make more power, you know, or, or hold more power in their hands. Because remember, the Whigs and the Northerners are expanding too, um, but they're expanding um, free states. And so the free states, slave states kind of um, balance is in question. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about in 1850 next week when we have a compromise, right? Because the question is, is this territory going to be slave or free? Right. And obviously Northerners and Westerners are going to say no. Obviously Southerners are going to say yes. And so we're going to have a battle over the Midwest and the Southwest and what our country is going to look like. Um, and we're going to have a compromise. Um, but that compromise is not going to last very long because eventually we know the Civil War is a coming right in 1860 it's we're getting closer right and so the big takeaways from this um, when you go through the lecture here let me make me big again when you go through the lecture um, you'll see the specifics for all the events I just talked through I didn't want to kind of bore you by going through the PowerPoint because I know you guys can do that yourself um, but manifest destiny is kind of the cloak to say, look, we're bringing Christianity, we're bringing civilization, we're bringing commerce, we're bringing trade all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Um, but what it's masking is that we are removing natives, we are bringing slaves and enslaved people, and we are displacing Mexicans, right? Um, and so Southerners are applauding this maneuver, right? Um, but the big question is, in looking at Missouri um, native removal, Texas and Mexico, that is very big government, right? And the Democratic Party at this time, Southern Democrats, they're the old Jeffersonian Democrats, they're the old anti-federalists, they're the people that said, if the Constitution doesn't say it, we can't do it because we want small federal government, big power in the states, right? But because all this big federal government stuff, right? Um, two wars, um, also the Seminole Wars, you'll see um, native removal, um, the expansion of people and government saying, we're gonna do that by using our armies to clear the way. That is huge government, that's imperialism, right? And so that is what um, we're seeing at this time. So my time's almost up. 
Have a great week. I'll see you in the discussion boards. Um, thanks, y'all.